Good morning. January 19th, 2023. I'm out here shooting my favorite longbow, the Howard Hill Wesley Special, which I, I have named Olive Oil. And uh, I want to tell you about a, a thing that I had on my mind that I watched a preacher this morning on YouTube, a good preacher. But I watched him digress, I feel like digress, into a discussion about what the name of God was. This preacher felt like the name of God was Jehovah. And he was I think he had been criticized maybe by some of the younger preachers coming out of the different seminaries because they were saying the name of God was Yahweh. And he went, spent a great deal of time explaining why he thought that the name was Jehovah, that he um, had received an excellent education at some seminary he had had so many years of Greek, so many years of Hebrew, and he went into the different explanations about what he knew about Hebrew and Greek. I doubt if he could speak either language. Maybe I'm wrong. But this is what I want to talk about. Now, you, if you've been watching my video, you know that I'm rather fond of the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Now, but I also say Yeshua Jesus. Well, I know a lot of people out there use the name Jesus. I used it and I still use it. But one of my favorite, I think most knowledgeable preachers that there is, is Jonathan Kahn. And he also uses the phrase Yeshua Jesus. And he uses Yeshua um, and Jesus back and forth, just however it pops out of his mind. But my point is this, this is what I want to, without just going on and on. Look, we don't know exactly what those ancient Hebrew words were. Now we can come close, I think. I think Yeshua is close to what the people called Jesus when he was on earth. I don't think they called him Jesus, but I've, I've looked into it a good bit. But Jesus is a a transliteration of the, and let me tell you what transliteration is, it's the changing of one alphabet into another alphabet to try to approximate what the word actually sounded like. Now a translation, two different things, translation is changing from one language into another word in another language. Like if you were going to say the word battleship in one language and then change it to Japanese, it wouldn't sound anything like it. But the Japanese person would know, hey, they're talking about a, a battleship. A transliteration is changing the alphabet bit alphabet, the alphabet from one language into a similar letter in the other alphabet that would sound a lot like it. So with the alphabets that we're familiar with, the, we're, they're almost the same. But even in, even in the Western world, we, some of the alphabets are a little bit different, you know, A, B, C. Some have another another letter or two. But you can transliterate into similar languages and it's going to sound the same. But when you transliterate into a dissimilar language, it's not going to quite fit. So as to the name of Jesus, it got translated a long time ago, before Jesus was ever born, into Greek. Because Moses' 
right-hand man, his name was Yeshua. And they called him in the in the Old Testament when they told the story, they called it Joshua. But then when you no, know, when they translated it into Greek, is what the first translation was before Christ. It came out something like Iesus. Iesus. They were trying to do it from the Hebrew alphabet to the Greek alphabet. Now, if they had translated it word for word, the, the meaning of it was Joshua, Yeshua means the Savior or Savior. So, if they were translating it, they would have called him Savior. We would be calling Jesus Savior or the Savior. But we, we try to call him by his name. That, that's transliteration. The point I'm making is we cannot get to the bottom of what all of these names were and how to say all of these words. That's as God apparently meant it to be. If he had wanted us to know this name exactly, he would have given it to us in such a way that there would be no chance that we would have a disagreement. We do have disagreements on it. Is it Yahweh? Is it Jehovah? It is, is it Yehovah? We're talking about the name of the, the God. We don't know. I, if somebody says they know that for sure, I say no, they don't. All right, now let me tell you what, what Socrates, the great philosopher, said. This is one of my favorite sayings. Now, he was no Christian. He was before the time of Jesus, Yeshua. But he said this, the reason that I am wiser than other men is because I know that I don't know. And they don't know that they don't know. So let me tell you this, if you admit the truth is we don't know anything for absolute certainty, that doesn't mean we shouldn't pick out our best guess and act on that. So I picked out, I think Jesus' name was pretty close to Yeshua. I've got my reasons for that. One reason is that the Jews still use that word. Jonathan Kahn, who is a Jew, calls Jesus Yeshua but he doesn't shun away from using the name Jesus. It's divisive to fight about that. It doesn't bring us together. It does no good. Okay? So if somebody says, and I talked to a guy right here one time, probably 10 years ago, a preacher, and I was trying to tell him that Jesus' name was Yeshua. I'll never use that name. I'll never use that name. And he just got all bent out of shape about it. Well, he had the wrong attitude. Okay. Somebody comes up to you and tells you something um, about anything. This is how to handle it. And let's say you disagree with it. You know, it's possible you're right, friend. That's all you have to say. You don't have to say, you're an idiot, I got a better education than you, or anything like that. Because remember, we do not know anything for sure. We, it's impossible in this world. That is the world that we've been put into. We don't even know what we're made out of. You get right down to it, we don't know what we are. We know how it seems to us. That, But you know, when you get down we're under the electron microscopes and all down into the micro world and all, they're saying it's a bunch of whirly things whirling around with more space between them than, than solid. We don't know anything, really. It's what we believe. It's belief. That's called faith. This is, it's faith that causes you to act and believe as you do about God. You notice they say, do you believe? It's not do you know, because you don't. It's what you believe. It's faith. And that's the thing that the Bible teaches God wants more than anything, our faith. He wants us to believe what He says. Look, if we knew it, we wouldn't have to believe it. We would know it. If God came right down here and, and sat down right here between us, we would know He was here. I guess we would. Of course, it could be an illusion.
I say in this world, we know nothing. It's all on what we believe. Okay, maybe I made my point, but don't, it's not a good idea to be out there arguing with people about things that you don't know anything about. You can be polite to people and say, hey, even if somebody comes up and says something really stupid that you're almost sure is wrong, you still don't have to say that. You can say, well, you know, it, you could be right. You'll get along a lot better with people like that and you'll be able to start a conversation with them and maybe tell them about some of your beliefs that will help them. Not your things that you know for sure because you don't know anything for sure. The reason that Socrates was wiser than other men is because that he knew that he didn't know. And let me tell you something else. If you have that attitude, you know you can never lose an argument. You can't lose an argument if you don't know. You can only lose an argument if you insist you know. So you can never lose an argument if you say, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about that. You could be right. All right, this is Art Gardner Israel signing off.